Hello there, welcome back and sorry for my long absence from making these sorts of videos. I have actually shot a load of footage which I did weeks, possibly months ago, but my old laptop that had all the footage on has actually snapped in half, it is broken so it's been fixed. So effectively I've lost all the footage. Really what I needed to show you was the big pump and also the air pump that I've installed into the moving bed. So in this video I'll cover the pump, it'll just be a short video showing what the pump is, explaining the features of it, then the next video in this series will be explaining what the air pump is and showing its features. So we've already ascertained that the pump pumps up here from the pond into the vortex filters then it goes into the brushes blah, 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 yada 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 through all this and then back out to the pond. Can't quite remember which one is the pump cable. I'm going to drag it out to show you it. Hey, it's not that one. Must be the other one. Oh, it's not that one either. Where the hell is it? Just switch it off before I remove it from the water. Always a good idea. Okay, that's the water draining back from the filter. So I'll let that run through for a minute until it's quietened down and then I'll talk through exactly what this pump is. Okay, so this big fella here is feeding out through a two inch pipe up to my big filter is a very floor 30 from a company called Auga. And I'll, I would prefer to see it called the Spartan Pump. Auga! For tonight we dine in hell! Anyway, basically, this is a really big but very efficient pond pump. This one is a variable consumption pump. So by using this thing, which I'll demonstrate in a minute, which is like an electronic up and downer, electronic control unit, you can control the flow from next to nothing all the way up to 30,000 litres per hour. So effectively, the amount that the pump pushes out dictates how much energy it draws in from the electric. So you can be spending anywhere from 5 watts of power up to 440 watts of power. But I've noticed that when I'm running it, um, it tends to hover around about 400 watts consumption. I think the, the height that it pumps to or the weather conditions or the density of the water all affects how much power it consumes so I notice it go up and down I mean without me fannying around touching it you know um, I tend to be on like warm days cold days I don't know density of the water might change not sure but roughly 400 watts for a 30,000 litre per hour pump which can pump to six meter head is very very efficient I mean some of you guys in America you use big pumps on your ponds and the running costs on them are astronomical you know, I mean, there's like multi kilowatts of power consumption and that's going to cost you a fortune to run. This one will not cost me a fortune. Compared to a small pump, it will obviously, but compared to other big pumps that a lot of people use in their ponds, this is a cheap option. I mean, as far as the actual design of the pump goes, there's nothing really much to show you. It's basically just a big pond pump that's a submersible with a good draw area on the front. It's very easy to clean, you literally just scrape the muck off there, chuck it in and forget about it. That's exactly what I need for this big pond. So let's chuck them back in. <laughs> Sploosh. Now these pumps are available in a maximum output of 5,000 litres per hour, 10,000 litres per hour, 20,000 litres per hour, 30,000 litres per hour. So I went with the biggest option because I've got quite a big pond and a huge filter system to keep feeding with dirty water. 
I'll bring the camera in and I'll show you the control box part of it. I'll basically switch it on, then I'll put the power up and I'll put the power down. It's a really simple thing to operate and you'll probably notice that the wattage will slowly increase. It won't just instantly jump to 400 and odd watts. That's because the motor just do doesn't just start like ah, full speed. It kind of builds up to full speed. That's an efficient way to start the pump. I'll give you a close-up with the box because that uh, pump was very dirty when I took it out. That's a clean version of it. Nice big strainer. You always want a nice big strainer on a pond pump that's going to be sitting in muck. Oh, hopefully you can see this because it's a very bright day, but basically we've just got three dashes across there. That just indicates that there is power to this unit, but the pump is not on. That button switches it on. That one knocks the output up. That one knocks the output down. That shows you how many watts is being consumed, which you'll see in a moment. So basically, as you reduce the output, it reduces the power consumption. That is an excellent idea. It's much more efficient than using an inline tap. Right, I'll just shade that so you can see what I'm on about. There's those three dashes. Turn it on. Starts on 100 watts, and you should see it climb up. There you go. Diddle 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 diddle. So that is the current power consumption. There. 366, 4, 7. <laughs> it does vary a bit, especially when the pump first starts up. It tends to run pretty stable at about 400 watts. Sorry, duckies, did I scare you? you want some more food? Are you eating all that food already? Go away. Come on then. Go away. There you go, it's stuck into that. So really that pump that sits in the pond, that big monster, is very, very similar to the one that runs my shower filters, which is the Blagden Amphibious IQ 12000. That one is also electronically adjustable, so you can get the flow right up or right down. I really like these adjustable flow pumps and if you've got a pond and it requires a pump fed system or even a, a dry mounted system that would definitely be worth considering because all you got to do is just put hose tails on the inlet and outlet and you could actually sit this one after a koi filter if your koi pond had a bottom drain and the filter was gravity fed so your pump would be after your filter. It's a pretty versatile pump, extremely low running costs for the output and it's been in here a few months now and it's never faltered at all that's the first time that I've been into it to get it out and it's not really clogged up and yet it has pumped a lot of filth into the filter so that's good I am pleased with it thanks for watching I'll see you next time and in the next video we're going to be taking a look at the new air pumps that I've got one in the filter and one in the pond see you next time